let's begin by invoking the ancient Greek <laughs> language of the Odyssey. You mean the way it originally sounded? We yes. Think. yes. Yes. Well, you'd have to imagine somewhere around, let's say, the 8th century BC, in a great pine hall, and the nobles are sitting around a bard who has a is strumming an ancient harp. And he is singing the opening lines of the Odyssey, because the Odyssey was not just chanted, it was sung. Now the lines were in English, sing in me muse, and through me tell the story of the man of many ways. But in ancient Greek it would have sounded something like, Handra moye nepe muza, polytropu. That's the opening. And it went on from there. And that descriptive, polytropun, the many ways, is also, it could also mean many potentials, many turnings, many possibilities. We, we study Odysseus because he is pure potential. He has extraordinary knowledge of the ways of the world. He can do anything, he can find anything, he can create anything but he is lacking in the depths. That's why we say he's the first modern man. He makes colossal blunders. Extraordinary bl blunders, and that's mm -hmm. why the depths get him in the form of Poseidon, the god of the sea. He's always continuously shipwrecked on an island where some great um, denizen of the ancient goddess culture, the ancient matrifocal culture, the culture in which was much more women-centered before the invaders of which he is the last remnant, came down and sacked those cultures. And they train him in the depths and the vertical dimension of life. Well, I think it's significant that this myth continues to speak to us for a period of nearly 3,000 years, and, and that we're going through cultural transitions now that echo or are reminiscent of some of the things that happened back then, the struggle between the, the patriarchal society and its, and its mode of conquering and mm -hmm. domination versus the, the deep wisdom of uh, the feminine culture, the goddess or matriarchal culture. We're certainly doing that, and we're in the same state of whole system transition. Um, the Odyssey begins, as you know, where the Iliad leaves off, the culture of total war, of mm -hmm. the hero heroic culture. The Iliad is the <clears> great <throat> epic poem, also written by Homer, about the Trojan yes, War Yes, probably itself. written about 30 years earlier, mm -hmm. probably written around 750 B.C., and we can put the Odyssey somewhere <laughs> around 720 B.C. Mm -hmm. And, of course, it is the story of what happens when these warriors who have to be debriefed from the warrior attitudes have to go home. It's the same thing where we are now. Suddenly we are without a cold war. Mm -hmm. Suddenly we don't have that enemy. And when we don't have the enemy, this is true of America today, then all the shadows rise within us. And all of the unfinished business rises and we have to be not only debriefed from our old attitudes, we have to essentially be reinvented, reconstituted, um, because let's face it, the way we are, we're being educated for about the year 1895, not for the immense complexity of a world that is moving, not only towards peace, but into a world that works. And it's ironic and interesting that we can look at one of the most ancient of myths and find in it the, I think you would use the word, the codings that can enable us to face our future. Well, you see, a myth is something that never was but is always happening. It's not a superstition. The myth contains almost the coded DNA of the human psyche. It gives us the rest of the story. It gives us the larger pattern. And in this great story myth of Odysseus, I think we have the patterns of where we have come from, what the problems that we are in now, and where we possibly can go. Mm -hmm.